Welcome to All Gone Pete Tong and Evolution 935. This is your All Access Pass, one of the hottest parties of the year. And look who we've got here, hey. Steve Aoki. What's up? First of all, is it Steve Aoki, Steve Aoki? Uh, well, we're in America. Aoki's fine. I, I was born in Miami. That's very cool. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a more of a West Coast raised got boy. It. But, uh, but yeah, you, you can't deny that I was, that this is where I was born. I was born down in Mount Sinai. You were? Yeah, yeah. So, like, just, like, a couple of miles away from where we are right now. So, we have reached out to Evolution 935 listeners and compiled 10 quick questions for you. Okay. But before we start, I'd yeah. love to talk about your new single with yes. Moki that I'm proud to say we've been playing for quite a while Thank on Evolution. Thank you so much. It means so much to me because this is, this is one of my uh, most favorite records I've ever produced. Um, and it's it's a it's like a record that I really geared for radio to play out. So um, you know I never really did that. Like I'm always producing club records. Got and it. Delirious was the first time. This is really the second challenge for me to really get into radio. So, so how did it all come together? Um, well, originally it was a remix, okay. and uh, Moxie and her team sent me the track, and I didn't have time because I was finishing up Neon Future Part Two. Okay. And um, and. You know, I heard it, I just fell in love with it, and then we decided to make it an original record on Neon Future 2, which is coming out in May. So it's a lead-off single. And the title? I Love It When You Cry. Awesome. So let's start our quiz. Are you okay, ready? Okay, let's do it. All right. What is your favorite thing to do in Miami? My favorite thing to do in Miami is go on Dave Grutman's boat. <laughs> which I did yesterday before he crashed into David Guetta's uh, dock. I saw that. <laughs> what is your favorite track of the moment? Uh, my favorite track of the moment is I Love It When You Cry, uh, my collaboration with Moxie. Is it my favorite track? I mean, it truly is. You know, okay, it's good. like the track I look forward to playing the most. Um, you know, it's a record I'm, I'm really trying to, to, to share with as many people as possible. Well, download it now. What can we expect from you in 2015? 2015 is Neon Future 2, which is coming out on May 12th, and it's another full-length collaboration with Snoop and Linkin Park and Walk Off the Earth Ooh. and Magic Coma and Nervo wow. and Moxie and, uh, and yeah, and some more and more uh, features on there as well. It's going to be big. It's a big one. It's a big one. Awesome. What is the most embarrassing song you have on your phone? The most embarrassing Cheesiest. song I have on my phone. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't call it embarrassing because if it's on my phone, I love it. You okay. know. Yeah. But you know, something that you wouldn't ordinarily assume. Um, maybe like Taylor Swift's new single. I don't care who it is, as long as it like. If I can sing along to it and I want to sing along to it, then um, then I want to hear it. Then I want to download it. Very cool. Where did your cake throwing habit come from? It all started in 2011, and uh, it was inspired from a music video by a group called Auto Erotic on Dimmock Records of these cakes exploding really slowly in people's faces. So I took the idea and I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna cake someone at a show and play the song at the same time. And you've been doing it. And I have 8,000 faces, oh cake God. faces. Later, here we are. Are they usually happy about that? I only cake people that want to be cake. Okay, that's, that's good. That's the most important thing. As people don't understand is that you don't get an ambush cake. You get a cake that you want. Okay, yeah, I agree. Yeah. What is the funniest experience you've ever had during a set? The funniest experience? Uh, God, the funniest experience. Um, well, I guess, you know, we're in the heart of what we're doing. Last time I played at Ultra, I remember this guy climbed up on this, um, like the street lamp, the street light thing, and he climbed all the way to the top, and he was just raging his face off, and he just, he was, it looked like he looked like King Kong, and we have it on video. It's awesome. It's on my YouTube channel. Like I had to post it up on my yeah, YouTube channel. It's amazing. People don't don't do drugs. Not good. <laughs> what is the one thing people ask you that drives you nuts? The one thing that people ask me that drives me nuts, I, I'm, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I don't really have anything, honestly. Wow. Yeah, really? I, I can't, I can't think of one thing right now. I can't, really can't. Wow, that's awesome. Well, good. If I were a genie and give you only one wish, what would you ask for? That we can upload our brains into a hard drive so we could download it into any sentient being 
that we want. So we could be whoever we want, but we're still ourselves because, you know, I believe our consciousness is, is in the way we think, in our memory and who we are. So, uh... That is the smartest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, that's that's part of the Neon Future. That's great. So Neon Future 1, <laughs> I have, um... Ray Kurzweil and Aubrey de Grey and, and on the album and they both talk about you know uh, kind of like life expansion and extension living forever right. these ideas that are science fiction to most people but could happen in our lifetime ideas of singularity nanotechnology really cool stuff like that you know uh, that you see in like movies and stuff you know except movies are always Apocalyptic and end really badly. But when you I look don't. Back, I don't look that way. Back in the day, they would not believe what we have. Exactly. Today. We so move at an happen. exponential level, yes, not a linear. Absolutely. And Neon Future Two, I have J.J. Abrams and Kip Thorne. J.J. Abrams, the director of Star Wars, mm -hmm. to me the voice of science fiction of our generation. You know, with all the the, the, the TV and movies he's created, and uh, Kip Thorne, the executive producer of Interstellar. And so Neon Future 2 is really about space and looking outwards in that way. So it's uh, interesting. Both, well, we're both looking projects. forward to go to space with you. All right, let's do it. Thank you so much for being on Evolution and for signing our wall. Yep.